So let, let's talk about the first important topic about functions. So I'll start with the simplest case, functions from the one-dimensional space, which is called a line, to either a plane or a three space. And this is going to be the first type of functions to consider, it's the simplest. Uh, basically, what that means is that you geometrically take this line and you put it on a plane somehow. So that geometric approach, the physics approach, is not quite obvious, um, but algebraic approach is going to be to give coordinate system to the line. So let's use coordinate t for the line, and let's use coordinates for the plane, let's say x and y, and then this function from that line to the plane is going to be simply an assignment of a point on the plane to every point on that line. So that means for any value of t, for any number here, you are supposed to get two numbers as the output of the function, x of t and y of t. And each of those is the usual function of one variable, the one you studied in Calc 1. The only difference is that now we consider those together. And now, after that, we can think of physics interpretation of this scenario. You might think of this t as time, and you might think of a point here, x, y, on a plane, being a particle that moves depending on time. So the function f basically describes how a point is moving on a plane. Given any time t, you're supposed to know where exactly the particle is. So these are the different points of view. And those different points of view immediately generate different questions about this function. Right? If you think about this curve. What can you ask about the curve? What are you interested about the curve? If I didn't draw all the curve for you. But I'm telling you, well, there is a curve out there. What would you ask? Well, just think about what you would ask, right? And then think about what kind of questions those are. How are those points related? Well, are those... The points you have up there. These? Yeah. There is no relation assumed by, by the function. The only relation that happens is between x and t, and that is given by a function, and y and t, that is given by another function. We assume no relation between x and y whatsoever. So, uh, well, but you may want to ask that, uh, although that is not quite a geometric question, right? So, if you think about a curve, and you want to know something about the curve, you ask geometric questions about the curve. Whether it is bounded, like a circle, or unbounded, like a line, whether it's curved or straight, or this kind of things, right? Now, if you think about a particle moving, you know that something is moving in a plane. What kind of questions can you, well, would you like to ask? What are the first questions coming to your mind? Domain. Are those the same questions as geometric questions? Well, not quite, right? You might speak about velocity, acceleration, rate of change. So those are the first concepts attached to the motion, right? When something is moving, 
It means something is changing, so you are interested in the rate of change, and you can predict, well, this is probably the velocity of that particle. Uh, can you tell me what acceleration is? Well, back to this. Uh, so we have different, totally different questions geometrically and uh, from physics point of view. Well, algebraically, algebraically, you would only see a couple of functions, like x squared plus sine. Oh uh, no, sorry. X of t is like t squared plus sine t, and y is uh, e to the power t. Right. What would you ask about this pair of functions? Would the first question you think about be, oh, what kind of shape does it make if you plot it on the plane? Or would you ask, if you think of t as time and you let a particle move, what would, the, what would be the velocity? Well, not at all, right? You would definitely first think about different questions like, well, you see exponential function here, you see polynomial function here, so that function grows much faster. That's probably the first thing to notice. And you also have that trigonometric function present, so that it adds some oscillation. So those three points of view are not only different, but they bring different, totally different perspectives. And, and again, it is only when you put them all three together, the subject becomes interesting and deep. Otherwise, if you just study algebra, well, it's dry and non-interesting. If you only study physics and without any geometry, without any visualization, well, it's also kind of boring. Uh, and without algebra, it will not be computable at all, so not useful, not practical.